My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Jim, we built this channel uh, taking a look at uh, old wizards. Thought when I flip the script a little bit, dig into Hero Illustrated number two. But first, what do you have? Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg is where you can join me to see uh, all of my original art, how I make comics, such as the Street Angel After School Kung Fu Special, uh, still available from Image Comics, the oversized deluxe hardcover. Uh, and you can see some of the extras that come with something like this are the uh, back matter, the end pages. This was one of my favorite design projects ever were these hardcovers from Image. So figured I would show them off while they're still in print and available. Uh, but you can see all of this and a lot more on my Patreon at patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Red Room Comics, out in the wild, man. Get them while they're hot. Murder on the dark web for fun and profit. It's going to be coming out on a monthly basis. I have to thank uh, you, Jim, for your glorious variant covers that you provided and i have to thank the kayfabe audience for ordering these things in a, in a very very big way uh if you want to read red room comics ahead of time hit up my patreon patreon.com slash head have uh, well over three issues up there right now they'll come out uh before they hit print and uh new strips come out every uh tuesday so jim wizard magazine pretty bad magazine Want to go in a little deeper with uh, <laughs> with one that's even more uh, off the wall? I always see people talk about Hero as if it's a higher quality version of Wizard. I don't know if I can tell a quality distinction, but uh, nevertheless, kind of fun. And one thing that Hero did do right away was they would include these mini comics. And I'm not sure which mini comic came with this, but it's one of these two is uh, is the mini comic that was included with this. And I did like all these mini comics. So, so dude, I had to grab your thing because your gatefold works. Oh, no. Like, uh, here's our Dave Dorman. That's a cool cover. cover. I do like that cover a lot. He's pretty badass, man. Yeah. He's a badass uh, painter. I used to have a Judge Dredd painting of his on my wall. Print, but you know, it came from comic scene when they would do their poster magazines. But yeah, I was a Dave Dorman fan and Predator and, and Aliens, perfect. Yeah, so cracking it open, uh, we do know that there is an ash can. With m metallic foil ink cover all right man <laughs> so it's one of these it is one of those and i think their numbering system was a little bit off this is a preview of the last issue of madman that, that tundra published and uh you know looks good full color kind of neat and then this is the matt wagner grendel batman team up and it's awesome because it has some previews but it also has some sketches and sort of more of the behind the scenes kind of stuff which i really would dig at this time you know like i always love seeing these artists sketches like this and any notes they have on what they're thinking why they're doing what they're doing um so i dug these things i still have a big stack of all these mini comics that, that came out of uh came out of hero and eventually wizard adopted that and did some of their own mini comics right this was an iconic ad for me too one of the great crossovers we looked at those recently and to me, that's one of the better crossovers. Pogs uh, are mentioned on, on, on the editorial on page one, so that gives you an exact snapshot of the time period that we're talking about here. Pogs mentioned uh, several times. Here's the ad. Like, entertainment this month would always appear in Marvel uh, Comics, DC Comics, all these comics, and they'd be advertising non-Marvel DC stuff, especially when Image popped up. I ordered from them more than once. Yeah, that's that's super cool. I always fantasized about it, but uh, you know, one comic in the hand was worth two in the mail uh, when I was a young kid, man. So I could never sit still enough to order something and let it show up. I would double buy so much stuff because I would order it, and like it wouldn't ship your order until the last book was available. And if it was an image book, that might be six months. I see. And I would end up at a comic shop before then. I would order because I didn't want to miss the stuff. But if I would see it ahead of time, and I would, I'd find it at a flea market or at a comic shop, and then it'd be like, well, I've got to have, I've got to have this new young blood. <laughs> Sega, Super Nintendo, all of that is still out in the mix, man. This is, this is the exact formative years, man. Yeah, typical letter column. Not too much happening there, but you do get some of the, the letter the envelope art uh, that looks pretty good. And I think it's interesting to see like how popular was Spawn. Half their envelope art is Spawn. Yeah, man. And they're uh, they're still doing massive giveaways. So they are just building their mailing list, man. So they can, they can uh, you know, charge video game companies premium uh, dollars for, for ad space. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. Their giveaways are one of the interesting pieces of these early heroes. I mean, Avengers number one. <laughs> Kind of unbelievable. I'm sure dipping into some of the editors and stuff collections, man, for the good of the product. Barry Windsor Smith leaving Valiant and going to Malibu on Rune. That's a big, big news item for this month. Big yes. news to me at the time. And they'll be talking with uh, Barry Windsor Smith, Howard Chaikin, Jim Starlin about uh, their, their Malibu books. Uh, the Bravora line, I, be I believe, is, is what it was called. 
And uh, just knowing some inside baseball, the reason you never see stuff even like Prime and junk like that, uh, the the um, sort of royalties that those guys have built into the contracts, Marvel would never. You it's know what? Like, I'm glad you... It sound like that bird. It's like... It does sound close. It sounds like it's in this wall. <laughs> um, <laughs> wonder if that's showing up on the mic. Lightning Comics. It's funny that they get their press releases everywhere, and, uh, and one of their gimmicks is they'll never exceed two hundred fifty thousand in their first printings of any books. <laughs> so keep it collectible. Yeah, real wishful thinking, man. But that's the truth. And yeah, uh, one thing that's cool is uh, industry newcomer Car- Carl Kershaw is an illustrator for one of their uh, their products. Man, he's he's a kayfaber. I've seen him comment on some of our stuff, and I believe he shared studio space space with a uh, Andy Bellinger. Oh, interesting. Yeah. The Tick animated series ramping up. That's pretty awesome. Ben Edlund signed up as a creative consultant. And then I don't know how this works. He Maybe he did some spec work or something. And they were like, okay, yeah, like uh, you're a writer now. Yeah, unexpected enthusiasm. Fox has expressed unexpected enthusiasm. Boy, that's a rough sentence to write for his extensive involvement in the show. <laughs> <laughs> the Stan Lee, they, they pinched Stan Lee to write this news. <laughs> <laughs> and that's image cutting back on titles yes uh you know noteworthy because as we continue to look at this 90s stuff and i think we are going to get back into wizards we'll look at some of some of these heroes probably comics journals because that second half of the 90s is such an interesting time period and you start to see it you know image was just gangbusters for that first two years and now they're already cutting back uh this is fun too the the Neil Adams Valeria the She-Bat it's going to be mentioned somewhere in here that uh you know that was supposed to be a Spawn crossover yeah and it's just never published man continuity is a funny one too Jim Shooter in Forbes magazine talking about the end of his Valiant relationship I kind of want to read that article I totally want to track down that issue man yeah yeah Spike Lee uh doing some comics work for Dark Horse Floaters is a comic that I have seen. Like that definitely it came exists, out, but yeah. I never read it. Did you? Did you ever read that? No. Did you ever see it? Be curious to see what that's like. Interesting. Uh, these relationships. You know, Dark Horse was doing a lot with different media, and and comics when they were hot, people were coming in. Man, Spike Lee. We're going to be talking about Clive Barker in a minute. <laughs> Spogs. Like this say- is the end of Eclipse Comics, essentially, <laughs> right? <laughs> You're right, dude. Just a pog with a bearded guy. Now, who we know to be Jason Wynn, but. Could you possibly be stoked when you buy some Spogs, man, and like you accidentally you get the Jason Wynn Pog? I, I don't understand any of this. <laughs> I've never been an older man than whenever you pull out Pogs and I'm just confused. Todd McFarlane does it again. <laughs> yeah, what did you exactly do? License, it's funny, you, license man, your stuff? Because this is, this is uh, McFarlane and Eclipse building their relationship, it right? Is. And then McFarlane buys out a bunch of Eclipse property whenever they go, whenever they go bankrupt. So, who knows? Seeds planted around this time. Yep. The Ultraverse ads and the Lightning Comics ads, not that different. Nor are the comics greatest worlds, man. That machine, is is, is that Mignola cover there on that yeah, machine? Yeah, it is. The machine credits Chris Warner, cool, Jim O'Barr, cool, and Mike Mignola. That should have been the best comic of, of, uh, of the decade. <laughs> The Heroes Reviews, man, they shotgun a whole bunch of ads, give you the good, the bad, the ugly, and it, but it's all pithy, and you really can't use it. Check out that Next Men cover. So I was a big Next Men fan, and I would love when they would do these covers where it's like original art and logos pasted up and stuff. Pretty cool. And uh, Midnight Men is Chaykin coming back to comics, uh, you know, drawing some comics. In this case, he was doing Heavy Hitters and Bravera. Yes. You know, like whatever the creator owns stuff that, that became available or trendy or, you know, whatever... He, it's like he signed on for those. And I feel like there are other guys that would do that. You know, like Sergio Aragonis has talked about these kinds of things. Um, I, I, I credit these these creators who hold out for these deals. Right. You know, they recognize that what they have is worth more than a page rate. Yeah. Savage Dragon 1 in there, From Hell. It's an interesting cross-section of what books are being, uh, being included in this list. Right. Ravage 2099, like issue number nine. <laughs> It does, it does run the gamut. That Monster Massacre one's really awesome. We looked at that of, here. Uh, yeah, Kevin O'Neill and, and Simon Bisley in there. That's one, if, if you're at home and you see that somewhere uh, at an affordable price, that's a fun book. These uh, sort of preview 
uh, articles are, are real awesome to, to give you a good another good cross-section of what's out there. And the cool thing about the hero stuff is they will get a little bit deeper than just the wizard stuff in a lot of ways. So you'll get a You'll get a drone and quarterly effort. You'll get a Fantagraphics piece. Caliber's mentioned here. Yeah. You know, I've made a big production about how Caliber and Wizards seem to be at war with each other for how much it's never mentioned. Right. Uh, you know, mentioned here. Brandon Lee, Taken Too Soon, Unauthorized Biography uh, from Boneyard Press. That's so gross. <laughs> and and they, they mentioned, like, uh, we're astonished at how fast yes. he gets these things out. Like, the, the body isn't cold be, yet. You, you won't be astonished when you review that issue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Blazing Combat was put out apparently as a comic book from uh, from Apple Comics, who would do some of the war, like the Vietnam journals and stuff. I had no idea that existed. That's one that I actually added to my list. Um, you know, Blazing Combat being Warren's war magazine. If that's available as a uh, comic book at an affordable price, I'm in. Yeah, like yeah. Like Archie Goodwin, Gene Colan, John Severin, Wally Wood, Alex Toth. There was some weird back and forth, uh, if you remember some of the comic journal stuff we were covering, because Mike Catron, uh, the, the kind of... Uh, the kind of Pete Best of Fantagraphics who put in with with Gary and and Kim uh, early on, uh, he 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 pulled out of Fantagraphics, created Arrow Comics, and there was there were legal battles because Harris Comics is out at this point. They bought the Warren catalogs, uh, presumably that would have included Blazing Combat. So there were weird legal struggles. Uh, back and forth uh, with this and I don't remember how it um, materialized but I do think I have a copy of this reprint so he Catron must have been able to uh, to put one out or maybe you put one out and then get sued yeah right I think that happens sometimes or cease and desist it the Avengers never looked worse than this this ad it's unfathomable to me like well, young Eddie who, who who picked this magazine up at the time would laugh in your face if you told him that Avengers is a cool, popular property in the year 2020. Yes. You know what's funny is if you look at the characters, they're all looking in different directions. Yeah. It feels like they're being attacked by 20, 20 different enemies from all sides, except they're all standing there in their cool pose. <laughs> right. None of them are, like, battle-ready. <laughs> but that blue sky with all the char- every other character's blue costume, do better. <laughs> <laughs> and And, like... The X Men characters don't even look cool. Like you have to be a Jim Lee clone to make these characters look. That does not look cool at all. But how does it look cool when Jim Lee does it? Yeah, it's a strange ad. And this we'll point out probably a few more of these. I think it speaks to how much comics were done like up to the minute. Yeah. So you get these ads that are like not finished art, not final cover, pencil art. You right. know, like all of these pieces, and it's it's kind of wild. It feels like this is a very different time period preview for understanding comics getting in yes. deep and actually getting a couple words from McCloud himself about the uh about the rubric that he's putting forth to us yeah what a what a huge book that was and on the same page is an R. Crumb sketchbook that Fanographics is putting out so yeah it's a nice this is a nice uh, preview of things that are coming out and speaking of like that early art, I really like that Deathlock art. I know, right? It's- I used to always, I'll always pick up Deathlock series because their covers look so good. And then I'm usually just not sold on them for one reason or another. But man, that looks pretty neat to me. Yeah, that artist, that uh, Kobiasic or yeah. however you say his name, like he would do uh, some really great late period G.I. Joe comics that were just wild looking, man. Crazy facial expressions. Rock and roll racing, man. They actual had actual music, man. You got to hear the the, the Peter Gunn theme, <laughs> and uh, very exciting. I always hated the Hero Insider because let me read one for you. So, like the fourth one down is Word Up. The big rumor from a certain comic distributor is that Mister Personality is on his way out. Premature to say the least. He's looking, and they're not stopping him. Like I have no idea what you're talking about, Hero. No idea. Yeah, like you know, comics is 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 you know one thing but like when you try to get a page six for comics just doesn't work because ultimately who gives a fuck yeah it's it's two inside comics for me anyway love savage dragon see savage dragon ads cool and mike allred man i think about him a lot like if i feel like he really benefited from wizard hero like you know he he's always very presented in a very flattering way and it always surprised me because I was reading him from the very first Madman series that Tundra put out and loved it, big fan. But surprised as he would become more and more mainstream. And uh, I think part of it is one, the guy's a good guy. If you ever meet him, it's very easy to talk to him, you know, normal guy, talented, whatever. But also, I think he always delivers. 
you know, I think he's a relatively fast artist and that dependability is important, but it really felt like his style was something that was new and fresh. And when that folds into like Marvel DC, nobody was drawing that way. It's very different than say like, this is Image Comics would be my favorite thing at this time. He was the opposite of Image Comics. You think about it, it's like there's Image Comics and then there's just the general grim and gritty stuff. So this is that, this is that Gretzky thing of like, go where the puck is going, not where it's been. And he's just a different dude on the racks, man. Yeah. So I imagine like a Brian Hibbs kind of smart retailer uh, for people who just want something other than that stuff. This is the one book you could put into their hand. Yeah, I think Bone right. benefited from that, man. It's like if you just don't want an alcoholic Iron Man or something <laughs> right. like that, like you just read this. Yeah, that's it's well said, Ed. And also, I think he's a good artist, which oh, allows totally. him to be able to do a DC Vertigo book and then to do X Force. Although mixed mixed reviews on that one, <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> at least from the longtime readers. When he uh, lists his influences here, they all make sense. And then he gets uh, he gets pinups from from these artists, like on the back cover, and he just mentions it. Like it would be cool to have a set of trading cards or something. I think ultimately there are two, but. Uh, I do wonder, like, how that part worked for him because, I mean, he did get, like, you know, Dave Stevens, one of the notorious slowest artists in all of comics, to, to do a very beautiful, detailed piece for him. Is he commissioning that out of his own pockets? Like, is that a Kevin Eastman gimmick? Like He got a, uh, he got a Jim Rugg at one point, and that was commissioned, I assume, out of his pocket. You know, mm. I, I was paid for it, right. let's say. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, you know what? That's a pretty good one, too, for, like, invest in yourself. Yes. Because it's really smart to put put a Dave Stevens madman, you know? Like, whatever I, that cost, it's worth it for the promo, being able to reproduce that, to show it off. Yeah, yeah, shit. I had a, uh, the first issue I bought, it was, like, eight or nine. It had Alex Alex Ross did the color on the cover, and the back flip piece was um, Frank Frazetta. Yeah, that's another piece of All Red is just smart because that is something he was doing from early on. And man, it is a who's who. Like there's a Dan Klaus Madman piece that's really cool. There were that, the jam covers where uh, he, just other artists would draw little pieces. Klaus did a piece there, man. It was like an eyeball with a nutsack hanging from it. <laughs> <laughs> but he's talking also about merchandising, man. And and when you just see that logo right there, like that's that's somebody with an, with an eye toward that. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah, I would like water wings and color forms and all that stuff. It 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 fits with the pop art aesthetic of the of the comic. Like there should be spaghettios with Madman or something. He's also it seems like he gets there honestly. Like he does graphic music and you know some of these comics that aren't quite fully formed. Uh, you know to to arrive at a Madman that yeah make the metal lunchbox. You know make make the uh, make make those licensed uh, objects. So. Yeah, it's it's definitely a guy, another guy with that's not taking shortcuts to get there. So we have the uh, the Bravura Cats, man, Chaikin, Windsor Smith, Jim Starlin, talking about their books. Uh, all of it is like begins. So how do you arrive at at Malibu? Uh, once again, man, like that inside baseball gimmick. These guys were given a very very handsome deal. Uh, prominent creators of the day, people who are referenced by you know, the, the image guys is being important to them. Uh, these guys were able to, you know, punch their own ticket and Malibu were the guys that, uh, were putting the biggest money down. I bought all these Yeah, it, back in the day, whenever they came out, uh, very smart, I think business move by Malibu because they go from a year with, you know, image year one is on their books. Like they've seen how this juggernaut works. They've probably got some infrastructure set up in place. Why not roll some of that, uh, you know, both that infrastructure and also the money that they made. Let's see another. Let's let's do an image that you get to keep. Right. Even if you don't own the characters, you know, you get to keep that imprint. And, you know, probably more than anything, a victim of just the collapse of the of the comics industry. There was so much of this stuff. And I don't know that these are the best works of any of these three creators. You know, no. like I said, I was buying them at the time, very excited. And, and they were cool. They looked, you know, they had moments, but it wasn't. It didn't feel like it set the comics world on fire. No, no. It seems like they they made the deal before they came up with the with the with the with the book or whatever. Winter Smith talking about. Uh, yeah, I have some some Marvel work coming out pretty soon, man. Life Death Three, forty pages. You know, I just got to ink a couple more. That does not come to fruition and becomes Ed Astra in Africa, uh, published by Fantagraphics. I was hoping as he was like talking about that stuff that he was gonna like make mention of 
his Hulk comic that he's been working on for a while, but <laughs> that thing ain't even mentioned. Yeah. I think it's cool to see that what these creators are suddenly allowed to do. You know, like maybe that Life Death 3, the only place it could have been published in the early 90s is Marvel. But as all of this stuff opens up, suddenly he can keep that. You know, that can be his. And I don't know what the circumstances were for how that ended up where it ended up. Yeah. But it does feel like, uh, you know, these guys that were stuck with work for hire suddenly do have all of these new options. And you can't quite put that genie back in the bottle, even if the market collapses. These guys are all kind of like playing around uh, with all the publishers, by the way. Like Windsor Smith, he's got some Dark Horse stuff in the hopper. Uh, Jim Starlin is writing some of that Infinity Gauntlet shit I, and doing his Bravura thing. Uh, we just saw Midnight Men from uh, Howard Chaikin, and he's doing his Power and Glory gimmick for uh, Bravura. So uh, the, the, the big two are not as rigid uh, as they were with those uh, young image boys, and uh, these guys are, are playing the field, man, making, uh, making hay while the sun is shining, I guess. And I think Chaikin did say one or two times in her interview that he does live within walking distance of the beach, so... It worked out. Yeah, I wonder if that's Hollywood, though. Not <laughs> not any of these comics projects. Maybe yeah, sure. Black Kiss. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Gotta love the Shadowhawk uh, cover expose cover gimmick. That's, Dude, a, that's a ridiculous cover gimmick. One of the greatest moments in kayfabe history. <laughs> when we, we cracked the perforation on one of my covers and we actually opened that thing and saw that that arm is about the length of a human body. Shadowhawk should have been playing basketball. Three sets of elbows. Or, or beach volleyball, anything that those super arms would have been an advantage for. <laughs> Other than breaking people's backs. How about this dot matrix printer ad for this R Comics thing? I have this, by the way. There was a lenticular cover yes. like, like on it. I have one where the, the cover's fallen off. <laughs> the, the, the glue, I guess, just got old. It's just rich kids or something. <laughs> it's not very good. Yeah, like they just have, you know, some kind of skill... They can uh, work with a publisher and actually like have something printed, but there's nothing behind it. Man, look at that list of original art that uh, Bo and Board are, are selling there. Man, Del Keown, Dave Lapham, Eric Larson, some good stuff there. Yeah, for sure. That early original art market starting to uh, become profitable. You wonder, like, what does this company become if they go on to become, you know, Bone board, I don't know of now, but with these connections, you wonder if they continued dealing original art as some other entity. Yeah, is that Felix Comic Arts today? I was uh, pretty underwhelmed by this article. It's talking about acid and paper, which kind of cool, but I can't believe this is what you're printing in your second issue. Jim, you got to give us some time, man, because this is only part one of three. It's going to be fair. the next two months worth of uh, Hero Illustrated, so maybe you'll have to change your tone. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and I do like it a lot better than Wizard's first 12 identical uh, How to Grade Your Comics segment. <laughs> right. <laughs> and here's the nonplussed uh, Jim Lee uh, poster that was advertised on the poly bag. Yeah, how about that? One for Malibu on the way out the door. Look on the back side of that real quick because it's an interview with the character Mantra. Oh, fuck this. <laughs> fuck this. There's not enough uh, minutes in the day for that shit. <laughs> That's another one of those ads that I think like, wow, they just aren't ready for two months from now. It looks like uh, Robin and Eddie Furlong from, from Terminator 2. That's hilarious. With Photo a, referencing. With a uh, knife arm. This Bloodlines gimmick ran through like all those annuals and it was supposed to introduce like a new character. I don't Every think any issue. of those characters caught on. Like 50, 50 one, issues or something. One character caught, caught on from that and that was uh, the Hitman character from, okay. from uh, Garth Ennis. Yeah, it had, you know, 50 issues or something yeah. like that, but that's the only one. <laughs> you know, this presumably this would be the character. Oh, it's not that... that uh... Could, Eddie Furlong with the razor could arms? Be. Those are arms. If you look, you like know they're what? coming out of her we, sleeve. I don't know if that's a her or him, but coming out of the sleeves. <clears throat> we might both be right. New two, heroes two and new, new villains. Two new ones in this one. Yeah, I wonder why she didn't catch on. <clears throat> you know... Maybe a cease and desist from Eric Larson. The impulse... Hellraiser. The impulse of uh, the, the knife hands, uh, It's it sounds cool when you're eight years old and you're inventing your own characters and stuff, but... The practicality of it. You can't drive. You can't wipe your ass. Ooh. Yeah, that's uh, that's a dangerous territory. You start thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting the razor line, man. Uh, comics is hot. Not for long. But at this moment, pretty freaking hot. 
So everybody's throwing their name in the gimmicks, man. You'll see Leonard Nimoy's name on comics. You'll see Mickey Spillane. Uh, and uh, Marvel connected with uh, Clive Barker, who already did some Hellraiser comics and things, to create a whole line of books. Yeah, uh, I bought all of these books for something like five for a dollar for this whole run. It's, yeah. You know, 50 issues or something whenever you stretch them out. Uh, maybe even more than that, but uh, not... You know, there's little there's little uh, trivia that comes out of them. Like Steve Scroach, Scroachy teams up with one of the Wachowskis, I think, on one of these books, yeah. who isn't a, the original creator. Like they're not listed as the original creative teams here because it's a preview of like the four main titles and the creative teams. But you know, some history there because they go on to work on Matrix together. Yeah, uh, pretty huge. I think Scroach was young as hell too, man. I think he might have even been a teenager drawing these books. Wow. Um, Max Douglas drawing Saint Sinner. I think that's my favorite looking of these books. It, it's it's pretty cool art. It has kind of an edge, very textural and stuff. But overall, like you said, this starts when comics are at their peak, and probably by the time it's coming out, it's the market's been saturated. Things are starting to fall down. It's uh, kind of bad, probably a product of bad timing. You know, he's mentioning uh, Vertigo. He's mentioning Sandman and. Uh, perhaps this is like Marvel, like trying in some form or fashion. It makes a lot of sense in that context. In that context, look at the books. Right. It's Jim Lee clone Gilberg artwork and stuff. And like, who at the top does not see that this Vertigo stuff is not this Jim Lee stuff? Like, you have the guy, uh, Clive Barker's an incredible pen and ink artist. He's a great painter and stuff. Like, like that's the aesthetic. There were established Clive Barker comics, even like tapping the vein and mm -hmm. stuff. That's the aesthetic. When you when you move to Gilberg and Jim Lee stuff, that can't be further from the Clive Barker vibe. Yeah, Marvel was so in on the chase, the image clone style. Yeah. Like, there, that became like their 90s house style, and it was so... It just did not hit. I no. love that stuff, and I hated all those... The house style version of it. Uh, it's unfortunate. You know, it probably lost a generation of creators then. You know, like Herb Trimpey leaves comics at that point. I mean, like, we're we're getting in deep, right? And there is artwork that's finished, but they're only giving you the <laughs> slightest little thumbnail, man, because they just, they know. Yeah. You know? They know this ain't long for the world. And they fucking still do this shit to this day, man. A stunt cast and writers and shit like that. And you get your big pop for issue one rapid diminishing returns afterward yeah i hear you it's cool to see barker in here they're talking comics it's pretty fun yeah it is but but it's it's okay it's a this is an after mag interview there yeah, so he's talking much. about how much he loves wolverine and how <laughs> he, like it's fucking bullshit he's bullshit he's a salesman plasm when it was called plasm and not warriors of plasm Yes, before a couple of lawsuits there. These Hellraiser books are pretty good. They're anthologies, yeah. and there'll be some really good artists that rule through those. Again, for people watching this and they're like, oh, I like Clive Barker, that's where I'd point you. Yeah, for some sure. Some of that stuff's strong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you get Neil Gaiman, Mignola, mm -hmm. Alex Ross doing some stuff. Spotlight on Jim Shooter. And dude, he's only 41 years old, and he's already burned through th two companies. Yeah, and, and 41 years old. I wouldn't have guessed that. No, 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 sir. That's uh, that's some hard living, but I guess, you know, being an editor-in-chief at Marvel is probably going to take some years off your life. Those so, are dog years working there, I think. Yeah, stressful, man. Yeah, the, the Defiant Universe really never made sense to me. You know, you talk about reading, like, the Razor Line universe in the previous article. You get into the Defiant Universe, and it is really hard to figure out, like, how could this have been a... I mean... I can't explain any of the titles. When this when this when this money's being circulated, the good guys. Oh, I know, man. And he's getting dudes like uh, you know, Claremont, Mike Barr, uh he's talking about how excited Steve Ditko is to be working for them, and I'm like, I bet not. But some of the people that he got the money from to to you know, start this venture trading card people so they were immediately like well when are, do we have to wait for uh for the books to come out before the trading cards come out and he's like oh absolutely not like it just seems like such snake oil all around from everybody on that back end man yeah i agree with you this this feels like it's put together quickly and uh maybe there weren't a lot of options for jim shooter to get this to the market 
Was there even a Charlemagne comic? I don't think I've ever seen that cover. I don't know. I, like I said, it's funny to have like the sidebar here where you can literally compare it to that razor line sidebar in the previous article because like it's just nuts. No wonder things are collapsing. Charlemagne, Dark Dominion. Who's excited for these titles? <laughs> yeah. I always think of Pat Mills when we interviewed him and he's talking about the title and it's like it's after the, the character, you know, whatever the main character is, that's your title. And you read these and think like, Charlemagne. Yeah. <laughs> War Dancer. I don't want to read any of these. Plasm? This is the worst set of titles I think I've ever seen. Yeah, I can I can agree with that. Though I have to uh check check out Cross Gen again and, and see what <laughs> some of those titles are. Sigil. True. Very true. <laughs> Ah, uh, Jim. Ah, this is what we're here for, Ed. I'll, I'll tap out. <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. I love this so much. Donna Matrix, Mike Saints. We've talked about Mike Saints on a special computer art edition. And uh, this was like his last big comics run was Donna Matrix, all digital, early 3D digital art. And uh, about this robot, uh, sex robot, who the guy's into some heavy, heavy petting, gives it a Navy SEAL program, downloads a Navy SEAL program. She kills him right away and then goes on the on the rampage through this city. And it's so disappointing because only one issue exists. And it's probably one of the two comics I've bought the most copies of. When I first found this, I bought like 20 of them, gave them to everybody I was friends with. I dig it. It's a really fun comic. And Mike Saints just disappears after this. It's it's uh, It disappoints me as a comics reader, but people would know him from an Iron Man graphic novel he did at Marvel that was digital. Uh, it might have had a little bit of 3D in it. And, of course, Shatter, the, the you know world's first computer-generated comic. Um, interesting cartoonist. I, I wish that he did more, but I celebrate the stuff he did do. He talks about how uh, the Iron Man comic actually did really well, but yeah. and was expecting Marvel to say, okay, what do you got next for us? And they just never did. That's like how Shatter and stuff comes after that all right man let's get schooled by mark a nelson from pencils to to, to ink first of all mark a nelson i would get him and nelson confused mark a nelson is the aliens yes correct. okay correct. Yeah. all right that's good to know uh this is the worst how to um you know like one of these installments i've ever seen so it's the male figure okay that makes sense superhero comics but he's standing in the least heroic sort of pose I've ever seen in my life. This is awful. There's yeah. nothing useful here, is there? It doesn't even have like the usual head diagram where you see he's like eight heads tall and where the waistline falls and stuff. This is, uh, man, this feels like something the intern threw together the day before it was going to the printer. When I was young, I was like chasing for s some information to just try to figure out where the muscles were, you know? Like the, the, the anatomy charts and stuff that you would be able to find in the library too complex like i needed superhero muscles <laughs> and right. and like these kind of things just just would not do it it's, yeah. it's on a weird angle it is it's a weird pose like his weight doesn't look right he's kind of leaned back a little bit yeah he's got to point that prow dude i will say the traps are berserk you yeah. know goldberg eat your heart out with these traps man that trap is up to and touching his ear yeah <laughs> Man, heavy hitters, second round. Q unit, Carl Ostatter. <laughs> what a spread. Comics, boy. Oh, and then you get to see the uh, the elements of style being applied to these, the, the finished pieces. These are just, I, I don't know, man. I don't find much of this info useful on this figure. Yeah, I know. I do like the reader cover art. That Wolverine is a standout for me. I would read Wolverine that had that cover. I swear you drew something like that before, man. I've I think drawn I a thousand things like that. I think I've seen a, a cable <laughs> from you that looked similar. The uh, That Batman is just a direct lift from the showcase ad. Yeah, the Klaus, Klaus Jansen. Jansen. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Although, if you're going to lift from somebody, that was a pretty cool drawing. Win a Captain America 100 here. All these giveaway books, phenomenal. Stacking up that mail-in list, man. Look at this, dude. This is this is a perfect juxtaposition. X-Men 2099 and just Extreme. Wow. The X Games came out uh, around this time. <sighs> Generation X. Yeah, there's certainly no shortage of X titles. Dude, I forgot this uh, sort of adjective, man, butt nasty. I remember people saying that, you know, that's butt nasty. <laughs> totally remember that were they saying it about hero illustrated they could it easily applies man double dragon the movie three ninjas go to japan 
<laughs> Police Academy Mission to Moscow. Like, it does seem like everything just so it kind of stunk for, for uh, you know, a nice period of time for a while. Yeah, it's funny. ElfQuest being, uh, being talked about here, I don't think that was ever produced. In perpetuity, man. Like, that thing is always, you know in some producer's hands. And I think that's, is that Roger Corman, uh, Fantastic Four up top there? Indeed it is. Wow. <laughs> Pretty cool. Hard Target, Van Damme's uh, John Woo movie uh, I mentioned in there. Is that, that the trencher. one where he's with his twin? No, you're thinking Double Impact. I think there were two John claude Van Damme twin movies. I think you might be right. I think there were. There should be. <laughs> if you're not? doing a twin movie, it should automatically generate a sequel. <laughs> Part of the contract. The thing is, I don't think it was a sequel. I need to buy some Trencher original art, I think. I went down a rabbit hole looking at it recently, and you can find some really cheap, and it's it's no other comic art I've ever seen looks like it. Yeah. I think he drew directly to ink, I believe I read. It's just wild stuff. I, I really am happy Trencher exists. Dude, even Mirage Studios has a line. I know Stupid Heroes definitely came out. Never heard of Bioneers or Xenotech. I bet you I, I have at least one of those. There was They did four issues of Plastron Cafe. They might have done more than that. I have four issues of Plastron Cafe. And they would they would have some of these characters in there. I'll have to dig those out and see what, what actually exists. But yeah, I do have Stupid Heroes. They kind even, of a Kirby riff from yeah, Peter Laird. Yeah, Peter Laird gimmick. Uh, the Xenotech, it even has the Jim Lee kind of mark making. Yeah, it does. Michael Dooney's a kayfaber. Never knew that he went that direction. Do you think that might be a cover by somebody and not him or somebody inking? Like a... It's so different from the work that he does. I mean, you're, you're probably right. Because he was fooling around. like he. I think Dooney is the one that did the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Savage Dragon crossover. So like he may have been fooling around with some of those image guys yeah. to, to get a pinup or a cover or something. Union was something I was real excited by. Yeah, more text. Oh, dude. You got a quarter? <laughs> hey, mine are, mine are rubbed off. <laughs> somebody, somebody rubbed mine off, didn't win, just left it in there. See, I feel <laughs> obligated to do it just, just for the... Uh, Imagine if you won. Yeah, totally. Like some, this is the kind of thing that could go viral. That X Men number one, the odds of winning are one in two hundred thousand. And it has to. All three have to match up. I have no idea how you play this game. Okay, we read it. That, that gold foil looks like it. It's. Uh, but there was suspense there for a moment. On there. Read yeah, the rules it. because we have two matches. Like all yellow, these cards okay. should review. Re, should have two, two matches. First one. Mine is yep. o, o, so we just three. have one more to yeah. go. Not even a pair of them. Video game <clears> review. <throat> Slowly getting into the three D era. Dark Knight, I mean, uh, Daredevil Year One, or excuse me, Man Without Fear miniseries. They don't even say what it's called. <laughs> the title of that series is not listed in this ad. Wow. I like this Mortal Kombat art, especially like that. That character is really yeah, fun. Yeah, for sure. The, the heads on the spikes at the bottom. These guys were so huge that they they were showing up everywhere, and you would get to see sketches and process stuff and all kinds of uh, magazines beyond, you know, Game Pro magazine. It was a phenomenon. It's always interesting how that happens, those breakouts. How about a Rebel, Rebel Studios full-color ad? Yeah, man. Faust 10. Gunfighters in Hell. Man, somehow I tracked down Gunfighters in Hell back in the day. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that was a late late purchase for for myself. Trading <laughs> cards get their column. <laughs> Figures. This pit, like the final yes. um the final sculpture for that, there there are there's a set of uh Ice T interviews that you could find where he's talking like, you know, he's being interviewed in his house and you look over his shoulder and you could see the this pit statue in its final form it's so random he's such a nerd like you know like you go into his um instagram i mean his uh twitter and stuff and he'll holler out like his gamer tag on xbox and shit like that like you know he's he's a nerd 
I love the homemade figures. I like all those. Yes. This is a weird one, this uh, top 10, because it, I don't think it's based on anything except they're just calling out what they think the top 10 hot books are that are coming out this month. It's not based on Petro sales. Comics. It's not based on like demand from back This is weird. Like Wizards top 10. RC Cooler Superheroes, man. It's just what they're predicting man. to be top People 10. were making Number money. Number nine, Razor like, Line. Talked about that particular cover thing. You have a copy. I have a copy. Like They must have circulated. Oh, they must yeah. have sold. I guess so. There's your Hillary Barta. Oh, yeah. I didn't know there were two issues of Stupid. Apparently three with a 3D uh, a three D variant. I don't think number two. I don't think they're all 3D. I think that's a special... Huh. I, have to, I have to do some research on Stupid <laughs> this week. This ad says it all, man. Comics, trading cards. These things were hot at the time. Uh, Be those Beckett books. Like, you go to the 7-Eleven uh, price guides all over the place, man. Football cards, hockey cards, baseball cards. By the way, issue one of Hero, they're criticizing the, the guy who wrote in with the idea of having these hard covers. Right. Uh, you know, protecting s sealed cases. They thought that was the dumbest thing ever. And there it is, man. All you got to do is send them some ad dollars. I like that ad for Razorline. That's probably the coolest piece of Razorline art that, I, that I've seen. Still keeping that art real small, man. <laughs> <laughs> the smaller, the better. So, Jim, uh, will, wow. there, will there be an issue three of uh, Hero Illustrated? I think the kayfaber is going to decide that. Yeah, yeah. Let us know in the comments <laughs> below. <laughs> Gay favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? Join me on Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg, where you can download my out-of-print, hard-to-find zines and mini-comics. You can see my original art, scripts, notes, how I make the comics I make, all of that and more. Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. Red Room, issue one, out on the stands right now as of this recording. We have issue two, off to the presses. Uh, it's going to be coming out get every chance month. To read so the comics ahead of time. Three bucks to get you uh, the archive there, the and there are through the more than 100 pages website, right now. Uh, the link Subscribe to the description below can take you there. The, the link tree can video. also take you, can you to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Jimmy, give him one less set of marching orders, man. We're going to be on our way. Read more comics.